Revenge Films. Hi, my name is Narina. I'm 30 years old, and I'm a housewife living with my husband, Daniel, and my daughter, Irene, who is in elementary school. Where I live is pretty much next door to where my parents live, and my younger sister of three years, Priscilla, married two years ago, and also lives nearby. For the longest time, Priscilla and I were very close, but after she married Thigo, with whom she was together for a long time, our chances of meeting became sparse. I expected that would happen once we started families, but it actually became quite rare, and I was feeling a little lonely. But I did know that Thigo was a good man, and a good husband for her, so I didn't want to impose on their time together and try to see her. As time wore on in this manner, eventually a year passed since the last time I'd seen Priscilla, until one day, when I went to my parents' place for a memorial service, a great number of relatives were present. However, there was no sign of Priscilla. Hey, Mom, did you contact Priscilla at all? Of course I did. She said she'd come, but it looks like she's pretty late. She hasn't stopped by in such a long time. I wonder what's going on with her. It was just too unconventional not to show up at a memorial service without contacting anyone. I decided to contact her myself, but upon listening to her voice on the line, I immediately noticed how tired and sad she sounded. When I told her to just get here before the service started, she said, I understand, in a weak voice before hanging up. After a bit, she arrived. I was shocked at how she turned out. Priscilla, who had a normal healthy build, had become dangerously thin. When we asked her what was the matter, with a forced laugh, she said that her dieting had paid off. Mom got pretty worried about her. After the memorial service, everyone went home, and we decided to eat at home together, the four of us, for the first time in a while. Daniel, who'd noticed Priscilla's strange situation, was kind enough to head home with Irene beforehand. As I talked and laughed with my mom and dad, my sister had the look of darkness across her face. I set my objectives and asked her the matter. Priscilla, honey, you don't seem to be bright today. What's the matter? I was thinking the same thing, dear. We're family, and you can tell us everything. Are things with Thigo going downhill? It's not like that. We're on your side, Priscilla, regardless of your situation. Please don't keep us in the dark. When we tried harder to convince her to talk to us, she started to cry. She gradually removed her jacket, and an unbelievable amount of bruises showed themselves. He's been... assaulting me... for two years! Thigo's been beating you, has he?! That freaking bastard! How dare he do this to my own daughter! Calm down, honey. He ordered me to keep quiet from my family. So please don't say anything to him! But... what's going to happen to you, honey? You can't ask us to stay quiet! It's not going to happen! Mom broke down. I gently hugged Priscilla, trembling with fury. I didn't know you were hanging in there, honey. I'm so sorry I never noticed anything. My sister was crying into my sleeve all the while. She went on explaining things in details to us. She and Daigo had tied the knot after being together for three years, but the kind man he'd been during the relationship became a monster. Doesn't like the menu for dinner, the cleaning's not been done properly, he'd make up excuses to verbally abuse Priscilla, and when he was particularly in a bad mood, the abuse would turn physical. And the fact that she'd endured this kind of life for two years... I couldn't forgive Daigo. And I never will. No way I was going to do anything about it. So I persuaded her into doing something. At first, her fear of her husband had made her filing for divorce a Sisphean task. But, as we stated again and again, that we would be supporting her the whole way, she slowly became adamant. When she decided to file for divorce, I decided to set a certain plan in motion. Even though she'd been going through this for two years, a sudden divorce without anything else would surely not be satisfactory. We needed Daigo to confess his domestic violence, so we could demand compensation. But considering he'd told Priscilla to keep her mouth shut about what goes on at home, 
I didn't think he'd confess that easily. That's why we needed to get proof of his abuse before they divorced. So we told Priscilla, who stayed the night on account of the memorial service, to go back home as though nothing had changed. We, her family, hid in her closets before Thigo got home. As we held our breath in waiting, Thigo came home without a smidge of doubt. After dropping his sorry ass on the sofa without even letting his wife know he was home, he suddenly threw the remote control at the wall. And then he started to yell at the poor terrified Priscilla. The frick you think you're doing? Leaving your husband and staying the night somewhere else! Uh, I'm sorry. Who freaking gave you permission to go to that memorial service? You good for nothing, unfaithful whore! Did you even stay in your freaking parents' place? Don't tell me you're cheating on me! I'm not! I really did stay over at my parents' place! Like hell, I'll forgive you for not cooking a meal for your tired husband and leaving him alone at night! The memorial service went on longer than I thought. I'll be more careful next time. Shut up, you useless incompetent! No! Don't hit me, please! Thigo was just about to assault my sister, so I burst out of the closet and pinned him to the ground. Thigo was surprised and motionless in shock disbelief. When he finally came to his senses and understood what was going on, he got excited again and continued to brutally insult Priscilla. What's the meaning of this, Priscilla? Did you trick me? You did! Enough! I don't want the likes of you to be with Priscilla. Do the inexcusable to my own daughter! Sign for divorce! No! Divorce? I was only educating this good-for-nothing pork slice of a wife! Where's the fault in that? Assaulting her to the point of bruising her severely. I say you're inhuman scum! Get out of this house! So this is how it is. Dad? Shame on you. What's going on here? We'd called Thigo's parents beforehand and had them wait on the veranda. But now, they'd lost all hope over their son and their expressions were fraught with humiliation. Mrs. Vincent broke down on the spot while Mr. Vincent got on his knees and begged for Priscilla's forgiveness. Thigo, whose parents now knew of the domestic violence he was perpetuating finally became reasonable. Furious, we made him sign the documents for divorce before taking Priscilla home with us. And with the help of Dad's lawyer friend, we demanded compensation and damages. The amount turned out to be three million, and Thigo's savings dwindled to nothing. Furthermore, his parents made measures that he'd never inconvenience anyone again by informing their son's job. He was fired immediately and dragged back into his family's home. He'd now lost his job, his wife, and his savings, and perhaps he'd started to truly understand the enormity of his crimes at his parents' home in the country. But he'd personally apologized to Priscilla. Of course, he wasn't so easily forgiven, and she cut off all contact with him. Under his parents' supervision, he's living a life full of toil and effort, helping out the family farm. As for Priscilla, she quickly regained her energy after staying with mom and dad for a while after the divorce. Her figure returned to normal. Later on, she found a job and is now living a full life with a lively expression on her face. We became close once again, and she started to invite me out to lunch whenever she had a day off. Nowadays, she's become hopeful on marrying again, and I want to support her through to the end. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.